with every project. Um, this one started with me practicing the hand that I'm going to do. So I laid out some lines at scale and then practiced uh, the alphabet first. I actually had done a couple of practices at this point. Um, once I've practiced the alphabet, I make sure I know how it's working and what it does with a quill. Um, I then, this is kind of a process test, so I had the idea that drawing all of the capitals should actually go just as smoothly in this style as doing the rest of the text, and then I could draw them with the same quill, same broadness, uh, because that's what it looked like in the original, and that sure enough seemed to be the case, and so I worked on that, and so I did a practice run of that before I set up all of the final pages. Uh, so the next part was to set up and do the lines after I cut all of the parchment. So all the parchment pages were cut a little bit oversized. And then I went through and I marked up all of the pages with a bronze stylus. What I like about the bronze stylus is that it both puts an imprint into the page, um, but it also leaves a little bit behind if the pages have been uh, powdered with pumice. And so a little bit of that bronze rubs off um, and leaves that kind of a nice fine gray line. Um, so I've lined all of this page. I'm not going to make you watch all of the pages that I lined, but um, it's a lot of them. And so cutting quills is a fairly frequent thing. So here I'm re-slitting the quill, and then I have to nip off the end of the quill as well. And so quill recutting happened about two to three times a page. And so I needed a fresh quill. Um, and then writing. I wanted to show you a little bit of what this actually the time it takes at speed with this hand. So this hand is deceptively um, slow. And so every single letter, almost every letter, has a lot of rotation, has a lot of twist and vertical back to horizontal um, with a number of the letters, not every letter. And multiple letters have multiple angles. Uh, so the A has two different angles that you use. The N has three different angles. The M is very similar as, uh, actually the M has less because uh, it's the rounded. And so just kind of showing you what this looks like little piece at a time uh, to kind of show how many hours this actually takes. Again, I'm using a goose quill for this. Uh, the knife in my left hand is holding the page down to make sure that it doesn't buckle too much and make sure that uh, the flexibility and the natural um, curves in the parchment don't cause problems. The ink itself is iron gall ink made using medieval recipes, uh, made from oat galls, iron gum, Arabic. At this time period, so this is an 8th century manuscript style, um, at this time period there's a chance that there would still be a little bit of lamp black in the ink, uh, but not always necessarily. Um, the one that we're copying the style from didn't seem to be, but it did seem to be a really good recipe uh, based on the color that it's aged to. So the whole thing is very slow, very methodical. Uh, just showing you some other pieces. This is kind of over the shoulder. Uh, just showing you, you can see the quill moving. It's very deliberate and movement happens as it goes. So a lot of the video was actually useless for this because my head just got in the way so much because um, it's hard to find a good angle. Uh, fairly frequently, particularly with my hand rubbing on it, I had to pounce, which is cuddle bone mixed with gum sandrac uh, to help absorb some oil as well as to seal the pores in that page. Here you can see a very slow capital being made. You can see that pin angle turn, and so that is three angles just on that one. And again, filling in. There's a lot of weird fills and a lot of weird angles on these letters, uh, but that does seem to be historically accurate. You can see kind of where the ink puddles on the historic manuscript. It really was just a beautiful, methodical text style. So there's your two angles you can see on that A. Here's the N, one, two, three, four changes. <clears throat> D being a nice easy one. But just to show you each of those changes in this lettering style. So it's technically um, is an unseal or a half unseal because there are some capitals. Um, and this 
all of the text from this, including the illumination style, actually comes from the earliest extant copy of the Benedictine rule that um, exists. So it is an 8th century manuscript of the Benedictine rule. Um, it's what the client wanted, and I was just so excited uh, because he based the text for this on that rule. And so uh, I was like, well, why don't we just copy the style of the original manuscript? Um, and so that's what I decided to do. It's a very cool, very simple m illumination style, uh, but the text was deceptively harder to do. So again, just showing the volume of pages that had to be done. So this is actually a fairly short book, and it was only about... 12 pages of actual writing, uh, 12 or 13. But again, with a style that is this slow to do, um, it took, I believe it was about three hours to four hours a page. I think it was about three though. So again, that was the last page. Uh, once all the text was done, once all the capitals were done, the next step was to go in with all of my orange and to put orange dots around all of the capitals. Um, this was what was done in the original. So the orange that's being used for this is it is red lead, uh, which is a lead oxide. Uh, you take lead ore and roast it, and you form this beautiful bright red orange. Dots. It can be both very calming, because it's very repetitive and methodical, as well as extremely mind-numbing. Um, and I'm really bad about kind of getting very, very close to it and just being absorbed into it for hours and hours. Um, so all of the red, the orange dots were done, and then I had to go back through with the same paint made from, again, that red lead and glare, which is an egg white based carrier uh, with some gum arabic in it. And using a quill again that's cut to the same width, um, lettering in all of the orange text. Um, so kind of all of the, the passage titles or highlight text uh, that the client wanted. It's a little bit slower even to work with the red lead uh, when you're writing just because the, the paint doesn't flow quite as readily as the ink itself does. Um, it's just a little bit thicker, but if I take the time, it looks beautiful. A uh, similar paint recipe, but used um, lead white uh, for a white H you can see on the left hand column um, where I'm painting here. This is azurite, which is a copper carbonate pigment. Um, and then the letters below we used one of them is malachite green one of them is um, I believe it was a lamp black uh, that I used to color those in <clears throat> and so this is actually the only other colors in this entire book other than the orange and the yellow that's going to be used for the large letters and so just a few highlight colors that were used so there it is so it's azurite and then malachite is that lower one that green uh, one of them is also yellow and then the black. And so then I went through and every single capital letter, um, I filled in the space with yellow. And so this yellow is uh, orpiment, um, which is an arsenic sulfide. It's actually one of the most dangerous pigments that I work with, but it's just a beautiful sparkly yellow that forms once you've painted with it. 